Today, we're diving into the house and techno festival that caused a lot of buzz on social media this year. I'm gonna be diving into my ARC 2024 experience. Welcome back to Let's Buy Podcast, everyone. And I am so excited to dive into today's episode because I went to ARC back in 2021, and this was my first time returning back to the festival. So I'm really excited to be diving in and just sharing a lot more about my experience, my overall thoughts about the festival. My experience was a little bit different this year uh, than what I was planning because I was going to be attending this festival and I ended up working it. So I'm going to share a little bit more about that, some behind the scenes things and all of that. So I'm really excited to dive in. But without further ado, welcome everyone. What are we thinking about the hat? I decided to throw this on last minute because I did get this from Arc Music Festival and I was like, is it cool to wear a hat on a podcast? Like, I don't know, but it works because it says house techno Chicago. I, it fits the vibe. And I feel like I'm a trucker hat girly. Like, I don't know. I think my head shape fits better with trucker hats than like a baseball hat. So Let me know what we think about the hat, but I'm really excited to kind of like dive in and give you guys my thoughts, the tea, everything, break it down for you guys. I did do vlogs. Those are up on my YouTube channel. And I was just really pumped to go back to Chicago and go back to ARC and I had the best weekend possible and so much so that it's taken this long for me to like get back into the swing of it and be able to sit down and debrief everything. Like since I came back from ARC Music Festival, you guys, life just has felt like it's going at a thousand miles, but in the best way, I also feel like I'm not the same person (laughs) and I feel like my life is so different. Like there was just so much shifts that have happened in my life. And I feel like ARC just really solidified a lot of things. And I came home and I'm like, wow, like I'm so grateful to be who I am. I'm so grateful for this life I have. And ARC was just like mirroring all of that. Like that's what this whole year has been, you guys. It's been a long year of healing, but I feel like ARC was really like, wow, things are solidified. Like I am different (laughs) and I'm so happy and I'm attracting all of these wonderful opportunities, people, aligned synchronicities and all of it. And I feel like I gave myself a lot of space to heal this year and ARC felt like, okay, when we come back from ARC, it's time to like turn the dial up and follow through on some of the things we said that we're going to do and just double down on our devotion, our commitment to ourselves and our growth and all the things. So I get I'm yapping and rambling, but that's what we're here for. I talk about my life. I talk about festival things and all of that. And let me know if we want an episode of this because I literally was thinking I was like festivals are portals like let's talk about it or like festivals are portals change my mind. Like I think we need a whole episode about that because festivals can really be these transformative portals for you, but you can also like channel that energy and come back to a completely different life. Because I use my time in between festivals to really get clear on what I want to cultivate in my life so that way festivals feel like a celebration. And that's honestly what ARC was to me because I left Regenerate Festival, which was in Denver. I have a whole podcast episode about that. I left that festival, came home to Austin, and I really just wanted to like get grounded in Austin and enjoy the summer and put myself out there and cultivate some new things in my life, some new habits, some new things. And I, you know, found a new friend group and like such incredible things happened this summer. And ARC was like a celebration of that. And it was a turning point of that too. And so now I'm like kind of like in this in-between period going into Austin City Limits. You know, I only had maybe three or four weeks in between because <laughs> ACL is literally next week. So all of September, it's really just felt like getting rooted and grounded in this new chapter in my life and this new version of myself and this new life that I I feel like I've worked very hard to get to because this time last year was not the vibe. So that's my like little life update of things. And it all ties back to ARC because ARC was just such an incredible weekend. It was so much fun. So kind of giving you guys a little bit more context and background, I went to ARC Music Festival in 2021. I was working with Gray Area at the time, which if you don't know who that is, they are a house music brand based out of New York. They do events in New York. They do shows in New York. Um, They also have ties to, you know, some festivals in the Northeast. They also have ties to Elro. And so back in 2021, I was running the Gray Area TikTok and then they had ties to Arc Music Festival and Elro on site. So I was working that weekend and I was running the TikTok. I was helping out with interviews. I was running around, honestly, and 
2021 arc I was so surprised by because that was the first year that that festival had happened and I was just so impressed by the logistics of everything the setup of everything I was really impressed for a first year festival like it really did feel like a house and techno festival done on a not a mainstream scale but like a bigger scale right that the production was very well done the sound was great the lineup was great like I was just impressed by all of it and so we went that week that year it was 2021 arc this was also when like the world was kind of opening back up and so it felt very like fun and exciting to go to going to Chicago I had been to Chicago before for Lollapalooza so it was cool to go back and then I didn't go <laughs> for whatever reason. I was in a relationship. It fall, fell around his birthday. So we decided to not go in 2022 and 2023. But like I kept my eyes on ARC. And last year I decided to go to Electric Zoo, which we all know how that panned out. <laughs> but I decided to go to Electric Zoo uh, instead. But I still I, I kept my eyes on ARC. I, I still supported what they were doing. I loved what they were doing. It seemed like it was growing. And, you know, I had friends go the past two years and I heard great things about it. So when this time came around, this has been a year of me choosing what festivals I want to go to, attending what festivals I want to go to and not working them as well. So when ARC got announced, I was like, bet you can catch me there. I will be at ARC this year. Like I just knew I wanted to go. And it was just a deep feeling, a deep yes of like, yes, I want to go back to ARC. Like I, I love the lineup. I love the music. Like I love the vibes. Like let's go. So I hit up my friend Brenda because um, I knew she would be going and her friends go every year. So I hit up my best friend Brenda and we made the plans and she was like, let's do it. So that was me kind of signing on. We just bought GA tickets. And like I said, I was planning on attending. So that's kind of what my mindset was. Um, and then, you know, the week of ARC, I got a text from one of uh, my old bosses from one of the uh, brands I used to work for Gray Area. And they needed help with Elro coverage um, on site. And so I was like, I it was, it's funny because I was like, do I want to do it? Do I not want to do it? And Brenda literally was like, Aid, what the fuck are you doing? Like, take the opportunity. And I was like, you're right. You're right. That's why you're here. That's why you're my best friend. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I, I got looped in and I was going to be doing Elro social coverage. And what that meant was uh, helping out with their Instagram stories. Elro had a lot of other events going on in Europe. They're a brand based out of Spain. And for those that don't know, they take over a stage at ARC um, and it's the Elro stage. And so, yeah, they do events across the country and they do stuff in the in Europe. And so they had a full calendar of Elro events that weekend, but they needed help for on site at ARC at Chicago. So I got like looped in and everything and um, I basically was doing Friday and Saturday taking videos of the artists, the stage, confetti drops, just all of that. Um, so they had the content and then on Sunday I actually was in the Elro Instagram account posting live, which was my first time ever kind of doing that on site for a festival. And it was just such a cool opportunity. Like I did that with TikTok, but being in an Instagram account doing live Instagram stories is a whole different ball game. Um, and it was so much fun to do. So yeah, that was kind of like the plan going into it. Um, and so yeah, that was kind of like the background of working arc and going into this, you know, I was just going to be an attendee, but then I ended up working it. And so that's why this review is going to be a little bit different because I don't have the perspective of being a GA attendee in that sense, because I had a different band and access and all of that. But I have heard obviously feedback of things, right. Of, you know, long wait times, you know, the whole ticketing thing, not being a wristband thing is a, is a little bit weird. Um, you know, I heard feedback about sound, production, all of that. And so I wanted to give that background and context about ARC because um, I think it's helpful to know. But I still obviously have some thoughts and opinions about, you know, the whole experience and the stages, what I think about that. So that's kind of what I'm going to like dive into and everything. But I wanted you guys to to have that context that I was like a working girl, <laughs> but it was still a really cool opportunity. And like, as you watch the vlogs, if you haven't watched the vlogs, you'll see I was like on stage with Cascade taking really dope videos of him and like other artists that I really love. So it was just one of those like pinch me opportunities that I'm so glad I took because yeah, it was just so much fun and it was really cool. And I feel like it reinvigorated a creative energy in me. Um, in terms of taking content and getting ideas and like 
it, it I teach a lot about human design in my coaching and I'm a generator for those that know what human design is a generator like they're here to do things that light them up and like me at festivals is me in my generator energy like it's me being a generator like on crack because I am just like so in the zone with the music I'm so in the zone creatively and so getting to create content on site for a brand like Elro was just amazing and incredible and I want more of it I was like thank you universe like more please um and it's definitely giving me ideas on where I see myself going right even though I have a nine to five right now I see where I could go maybe creatively now that I have that nine to five and can you know kind of uh, pitch myself for certain opportunities and things like that and it definitely was a great resume builder you know um and being able to network and connect with other people and stuff like that so needless to say let me know if we want another episode on like how to kind of get your way into the industry of things. You know, I've kind of like figured it out, but I haven't really. But I can share some tips and things because I know some people on TikTok were like, how did you get back there? How do you get backstage? How do you get opportunities? So if we want an episode about that, definitely let me know. Um, But it was just an opportunity that fell into my lap and I had to say yes. But that all comes from the work I do with Vibe With Aid and connecting with people, networking. And then, you know, when opportunities pop up that my name gets put out there, right? So it was definitely really cool to have that experience. And so let's dive into a little bit more about, you know, ARC itself, the venue, my thoughts on it, the production, everything like that. And so if you don't know, ARC is in Chicago. It's in Union Park, which is kind of like the west side of the city. I'm not from Chicago, so don't come for me when I say that. Um, But it's basically like kind of on the outskirts of like the main city part of Chicago. Um, We stayed at an Airbnb just a little bit more west of it. I would say about 10 minutes. We were kind of like on the map. It said like Ukrainian village. That's kind of where we were at. Um, But it was about a 10 minute drive or less, honestly. Um, And our group actually rented a car and parked it. Um, That's just kind of like what they've always done. Um, And then we had an Airbnb nearby. So we would go park, pay for the parking for the day. I believe it was like 30 bucks a day for parking, but we all split it. And then, um, you know, super easy in and out kind of process. And with the festival being from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., like that's not too bad. Um, But yeah, I think the reasoning for renting a car is just to not deal with like Ubers and all that. But if you are, you know, staying in more of the main part of the city, you could always take the L train. I think that's what it's called, which we did that in 2021. We stayed in the theater district in 2021 and then we were able to go on the L and it was only a few stops away. So it's definitely an easy festival to get to and from to, in my opinion. Um, And then the venue is Union Park and Union Park is... Not a huge park, but I think they do a great job at fitting everything into the park in terms of having, you know, four stages. There's the main stage, there's expansion stage, there's Elro stage, and there's Area 909, which Area 909 used to be like an art car bus thing (laughs) back in 2021. So it was really cool to see Area 909 and see what that space is. Um, So they do have, you know, those stages, they have a whole VIP experience at the main stage, they have tons of food options, vendors, bathrooms, you know, they do what they can with the space they have. And I think one of the bigger questions is, will ARC outgrow Union Park ever, right? There's people who are like, no, it should stay at Union Park. There's people that say, no, it should go to Grant Park, which is where Lala is at. Personally, I think that park is huge (laughs) for Lala. Um, It's a lot of walking. I kind of like Union Park. And I think a lot of people don't like it because of the sound bleed and like it's too crammed or whatever. But like it's super easy to navigate this festival. Like as someone who was working the Elro tent, but a lot of the sets she wanted to see were at expansions. I really enjoyed that I could easily go back and forth, you know, and they also added like art installations and things like that, other vendors and stuff. So I honestly don't mind the venue and I like how easy it is to get around. Now, I know sound bleed can be a a bit of a thing, but I think I say this with any festival that does sound bleed. It's like you kind of just control what you can control and you figure out the right spot you figure out that sweet spot at all of the stages where you can be at so that way you know you don't have to deal with that but we experienced that at Elro you know when certain songs kind of go down in the in the lows and the mids right then you hear the other stage right or something like that or vice versa if you are like closer to the Elro stage uh, in Aereo 909 and not really like dead middle then you're kind of hearing all the music right so you just kind of have to find that sweet spot but I 
personally like the venue and I looked back at my old videos of the stages and production from 2021 and it's really crazy just to see the level up of production in just those three years right like it truly felt like every stage has level up in some way which I thought was really cool to just see that right and see that growth and see how well it was all done and seeing the different art installations they added throughout the grounds even like it just adds that little bit of touch and I really did like Aereo 909 I like that it's cool it's like a three it can be a 360 kind of experience you can be behind the DJ um, and I like that there's like elevated you know surfaces to it I thought that that was really cool um and then there's also like, you know, the VIP experience at the main stage, which I didn't really get to check out too much, even though I had access to it. I did get to check out the expansions VIP area, which I thought was really cool, like having that behind the DJ. Um, I really liked expansions. I heard a lot of good feedback from everyone else, too, from that went the year before. They liked this year's expansions. That was a stage I practically lived at. And I understood why everyone says bury me at expansions. <laughs> and I was going back and forth between there and Elro. Like I would go get content, take videos, whatever. Then I would go back to expansions. Like I was going there back and forth. I barely spent time at the main stage. <laughs> like I maybe saw a little bit on the first day. I don't think I was there at all on the second day. And then the last day I was there for another, just for like a little bit of their set. So yeah, I'd be curious to hear what you guys thought about the venue stages production. I did hear, you know, that there was a little bit of some wait times for both the VIP experience, whether you had global or icon. Um, and also the GA experience, you know, waiting in line and security. And I think a lot of that came from the whole wrist, like no wristbands that they do with just a ticket QR code scan, which I find to be interesting. Um, I feel like for a multi-day festival, you really don't see that a lot. And so I think that's something that I, I, I like having the wristband. I, I'm glad that I had a different you know, I had a working band, right? And so I got a wristband, like I like it as a memento. But yeah, I'm curious what the whole thought process about that was. It probably, when it comes down to it, was about money, right? Um, but yeah, I heard that there were some challenges when it came to, you know, entering the festival. I didn't hear too much about security, but if anyone has any thoughts about that, feel free to share. But yeah, I feel like the main thing I, I always hear uh, or was hearing was just like the sound, right? Whether it was like sound bleed or the bass being too much or sound issues like that's really kind of the only feedback I feel like I heard about but if you guys heard anything else definitely let me know so moving into the music I'm gonna be honest I did not see a single full set <laughs> I think I saw well I, I if I did it was on day one at Elro because I was practically living there um, but I think like the most of a set I saw was like I definitely saw the most of Sunny Federa back to back eats everything Chase West back to back Beltron, which like that's probably going to be like my one of my top sets of the weekend was that set. I saw most of Golfos, which I loved uh, seeing Dennis Cruz back to back Pasa like that set was chef's kiss. The Martinez brothers have had some recent controversy, but I did really love the Martinez brothers at ARC. Um, allegedly controversy. We don't really know, um, but there's been a whole thing about that. I wasn't at ARC. It was like afterwards with some one of their other shows, but um yeah I really didn't see a full set because I was just working also on day three had some really solid b2b's like um Ben Sterling back-to-back -back Rossi Hot Sense 82 back-to-back -back Chris Dussey so freaking good Carl Cox back-to-back -back Green Velvet I didn't realize we were witnessing history there like I knew that I knew that they've like played together but I didn't know it was 15 years since they played together so that was just iconic in itself and I thought that that was really cool we got to witness that I would love for that set to be recorded but I don't know if that's possible but that set was incredible I didn't get to see the full another set or Barry can't swim set so that was a bummer also there was a surprise salute back to back Barry can't swim but I was like working uh, posting live that day so that was a bit of a bummer but like you really couldn't go wrong with any set that you saw I also did see salute solo set on Friday which was really good but yeah, you really couldn't go wrong with the music and you can't go wrong with the music. Like there was a little bit of everything for everyone and I was really happy with the music I did see, right? There was also a surprise Green Velvet back-to-back -back P on the second day because there was like some travel issues with some of the artists. Um, MK had some travel issues. Ketima had like a visa issue. So they had to like move some things around. Oh, 
I know I'm talking all over the place, but Azeka also had a really good set. Needless to say, like I enjoyed any music that I saw and I was very grateful for it, but I didn't really get to see a full vibe of a set, you know what I mean? Which was a little bit of a bummer, but I'll take it for the working stuff, you know? Um, but I at least got a little bit of a taste. So like I'm still fiending for another set. Like I need to see them like a full set. I need it. I just need it. I also feel like I am just fiending for the groovy, like the groovers, like the solid grooves type vibe. I don't know if it's minimal tech house. Like I call it minimal tech house and then people come for me. They just say it's tech house and I'm like, okay, then what's minimal tech house? Like, I don't know. Whatever it is, I love it. Chris Dussy, Rossi, Ben Sterling, Beltron, Chase West, Pasa, Dennis Cruz, like whatever it is, I just want more of it. I also think I should do like an ARC 2025 like wish list video because I think I like I think I would have a list of like people I want to see after this year and Michael BB is at the top of that list. I do think we're going to have a Michael BB moment with a lot of festivals next year. I feel like he's going to be doing his like US touring and stuff, which is really exciting. Um, but yeah, I just really loved every music I saw. Um, I'll also go into a little bit of the after. So I did get to experience Concord Hall for the first time. I really loved that venue. I thought it was a cute little venue. It reminded me a little bit of like Space Miami in the sense of like the shape of it having like a main dance floor and then like an upper dance floor, even though Space doesn't have an upper dance floor. They just have like a backroom dance floor. But it kind of reminded me of that um, where it just has like a bar in between it. Also, it does kind of have levels to it like space, except there's no like over the terrace kind of view. But like there is a stairwell of things that takes you into other little nooks and places. But I really liked Concord Hall and Golfo's was super fun. Golfo's afters, like so many people on TikTok were like, it was life changing. And like, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. Um, Chase West even opened for them. And I definitely would love to see Chase West again. Like, this is what I'm talking about, you guys. Like, I'm just fiending for this music in Austin. But I feel like I need to go to Miami <laughs> to like get this music. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm hoping it's growing here. Actually, on Friday, I'm going to go see Rossi at the cut at 2 a.m. So I'm excited about that. Um, so yeah, I really liked Concord Hall. And then Sunday night we did Disclosure um, back-to-backs with like, it was Disclosure back-to-back Green Velvet, Disclosure back-to-back Armin Van Helden. That was on the radius side. And on the Cermak Hall side was Carl Cox. And I'm not going to lie, you guys. I dealt with some pretty bad anxiety in this venue, which I was not expecting. Like, it's very rare that I deal with that. But it just felt like there was a lot of people And it just felt so different to when I went to Radius in 2021. Like, I just don't know if it was oversold, overpacked or whatever. But yeah, I just was not vibing with it. Like, I felt super crammed in and like I rarely get claustrophobia. And I definitely felt that in the on the Radius side, at least. Same with the Carl Cox side, to be honest. And it was interesting, like the times of things, because like the Radius side ended a little early, but then Carl Cox was still going but still went to like, I'm pretty sure 4 a.m., but Carl killed it. Honestly, that was the best way to end my arc was with a good old Carl Cox set. So I'll take it. And I really like the production of both Radius and Cermak Hall, but like just how packed it felt. It didn't feel like that in Cermak Hall if you like went all the way to the back, but like it kind of like makes like a weird funnel where people just kind of stop. But if you like kept moving, there was more space at Cermak Hall. I don't know radius if I just didn't figure it out, but yeah, it just felt very crowded and overwhelming. Um, but we we made it through. We we did the best we could and it didn't ruin the night and we were able to end our arc on a good note. But yeah, I was a little bit surprised because I loved like I when I went to radius in 2021, I would not shut up about it <laughs> like after I went. Um, but I was really happy I got to check out Concord, check out a new venue. I did want to go to Azeka and Salute afters. I believe it was at Smart Bar. That was on the first night, but we were being responsible. But I definitely would love to check out more of the venues in Chicago. I love Chicago in general um, anytime I visit. So that's kind of like the music vibes. Um, in terms of the vibes in general of ARC, like when it comes to like the crowd and like things like that, like honestly the crowd was a vibe like met a lot of cool people I I say this every festival but this was probably the most I got recognized you know 
every single day, um, whether it's from TikTok or Twitter or YouTube or Instagram. You guys are so lovely, so sweet, so nice. Um, I felt bad because some of you guys caught me while I was in the middle of working. So I was like kind of running to get content and you guys understood. So thank you for understanding. Um, but yeah, it was really cool to meet a lot of you guys. But in general, like still it doesn't matter if, if I have this platform or not like I still met a lot of cool people just vibing in the crowd like the people at expansions front left like we were in that together <laughs> like during Golfos and during Martina's brothers like we were in our vibe having a good time same thing on um Sunday with you know Hot Sense 82 Chris Dussy going into Green Velvet back to back Carl Cox like did not have a single bad crowd interaction, I felt like. And even just navigating through the crowd, like everyone was super nice saying, excuse me. So I personally felt like the crowd was great. And I know that there was like a lot of controversy about the whole pacifier and like candy thing. And like outside looking in, right? If you don't go to ARC, you're like, yeah, what's up with these rules? But it's like, I still got candy. You know what I mean? And like, there's so many other house and techno festivals that have been saying that on their rules of like, no can't, no like tons of candy, no furry boots, no pacifiers. Like Cross Music Festival has been doing that way before ARC was ever a thing. I just think, you know, it got the wrong side of EDM Twitter and it just became this whole debate about it. But I'm like, if a festival wants to curate a vibe, they're going to curate a vibe and Honestly, those rules, I feel like were written in a funny way, like a very satire way. And you just can't take it personally, you know. Um, but I got trinkets. I got candy. Like Plur was alive. Community was alive. The good vibes were alive. Like I was on site <laughs> and I can report that. Um, but to each their own, you know, maybe some people just didn't have that great of a crowd experience. But I I feel like I did and I didn't really see any bad vibes or anything going on. You know, what else with the experience? Um, I did do a little bit of like VIP in terms of, you know, I did check it out at expansions. I think if you want to do VIP. I did get a VIP ticket for next year just to like lock it in because who knows if I'm working or not. Like I might as well just get the ticket. Um, but you know, having the trailer bathrooms is nice. The separate viewing areas, all of that I feel like is really nice to have. I didn't check it out at the main stage, but they have a whole thing for VIP over there that it's a whole other world there. Um, but they have separate viewing areas, nice bathrooms. So if you care about stuff like that, that might be important to you. Non-music things, like I said, they had some art installations. Like there's this huge like mirror thing that was really cool that lit up. They had these big smiley faces. They had this huge mirrored like I don't know what to call it, statue and like a leaning woman. Like they had a lot, honestly. And they also had like vendors and stuff like that on top of the merch, the merch selection. I mean, I got this hat, right? Merch selection was really great. They had other vendors that you could shop from. I didn't get food on site. This sounds so bad. I ate before I ate after I didn't eat at the festival. <laughs> um, it just that's just how it happened. And so um, I know that drinks were really expensive from what I know. Um, I was able to use backstage, which was really nice. I could get that um, for like energy drinks. And like I would get like little tequila Red Bull things or whatever they had. It was like tequila ghost, which like I don't know how anyone else feels about this, but I'm tired of Ghost being the energy drink brand. Like I want my tequila Red Bull. Like I feel like that sounds so snobby, but I'm like, what is up with Ghost invading all of these festivals? They must be like giving them a cheaper offer or something, but I don't really like a tequila Ghost. I want a tequila Red Bull rant over on that but I know that the drinks were expensive from what I heard from my friends and then they did have water stations available if you did bring like a hydration pack and stuff like that so I know that that was available to people um the weather we actually lucked out with the weather we were supposed to have like rain thunderstorm on the first day and like it cleared up it definitely was a toasty one it definitely was hot the second day got a lot more cooler which was really nice but still in the sun was pretty hot um, and then it did kind of cool off at night, which felt really good, but it definitely wasn't like sweater weather <laughs> at nighttime. So yeah, definitely keep that in mind with your outfits. I definitely wore like breathable outfits, which were really nice. So that's what it, it kind of ended up being. Again, the festival's from 2 to 10 p.m., which is really nice because if you don't want to afters, you can just go home, rest up for the next day. But if you want to afters, you can, right? Um, so that's always really, I think, nice to have a festival that ends at that time. So yeah, that's kind of like everything really that I had to go over with ARC Music Festival. Again, it's a little different because I wasn't an attendee. 
So feel free to leave a comment with your experience. If you're watching on YouTube, let me know your thoughts. Um, and I'm really excited to go back in 2025 and I'll definitely put together some like tips and things like that from what I know, but like, it really is a easy festival to attend. Honestly, like I really had a good time navigating it. The sets were great. It's easy to go around to the different stages and, you know, it definitely has like a good vibe to it and you'll have a fun time if you go. So I'll definitely put some, uh, maybe like a little guide or some tips or something. If we want that, let me know. Um, but yeah, it was a really great weekend. I was working and having fun, doing what I love, being in my little generator creative energy, which I loved. And I definitely would recommend it if you've never been and you love house and techno, I think it's a great festival to attend. And I think if you love house and techno and go to these festivals, like if you've been to Cross or you've been to Seismic or you've been to Movement, like you kind of got to go check them all out because they all offer a different vibe. I've been to Cross, I've been to Arc, and I've been to Seismic Dance Event. I've yet to go to Movement. It just has not worked out timing wise, but I would love to go to that, right? And I feel like if you love this genre, like Arc is a really good festival to check out because it is done on such a like bigger scale compared to some of these other ones so all in all like definitely recommend it um i'm gonna be there in 2025 whether i'm working or attending is to be determined but i did get a ticket for next year just in case um so yeah that kind of rounds out everything but i hope you enjoyed today's episode we're getting back into the swing of things i promise this time um we got austin city limits coming up next and then yeah i definitely want to find some fun topics in terms of like you know talking about some of the personal development stuff but also festival stuff but also healing but also like the little festival adventures I go on so yeah if you have any ideas or topics you'd like to see definitely let me know if you're watching on YouTube definitely let me know um, and then if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify feel free to give this episode and podcast a rating and review I would greatly appreciate it it just helps me as I continue to do this podcast it's kind of crazy I've been on and off with this podcast since 2020 when we've had our own journey with it but I finally feel like okay can start dedicating some time to grow it so your rating your review definitely helps me uh, in growing this podcast and sharing it with more and more people about the vibey energy we've got going on in my world here So thank you guys so much for tuning in and listening. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, a good rest of your week. Thank you so much for tuning in and vibing with me. And I will see you guys in the next one. And don't forget to stay vibey, vibey fam. Bye.